Sweet. We're here. here we are. Welcome, everybody, to game number 18. 18 yes. weeks in a row, Andy. We are, we are a, a example of consistency. It's Our guest really today would, would appreciate having coached us that we are being consistent with this, with this outcome on Thursdays at 5. By the way, we keep mentioning, Jay, that we're going we're gonna to trade 5 o'clock for maybe 4 o'clock, especially with some of the East Coast guests. Our guest next week, is he is he East Coast or West Coast? He's West Coast. He's, He's West, West Coast. Coast. We could do 4 o'clock next week. Um, right. we, you want to commit to that right now? Well, after, well, after, make sure I have a, after I have a chance to talk about a potential remote site for us. So if it right. could work out at 4 o'clock, that would be pretty cool. And then we wouldn't be having a normal glass of wine or, or cider or, or whatever. We would have whiskey at the place that I'm trying to work out. I'm sorry, cider? Who has cider? I, I can't do beer. Beer messes up my gut. And don't well, you can it. do. I'm telling you, the the hard kombucha I think is the way to go these days. There's zero carbs, like maybe 90 or 100 calories, and it's got the probiotics for you know because we're getting old. Right? This is 15 grams of carbs, so I can hear you there. Well, although I think I mean I went to Ireland once upon a time. Matter of fact, our our guest is you know. Uh, a ginger. A ginger. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but I went to Ireland once upon a time on a walking tour and they had this drink there. And I think it was called Blums, but it was like a hard apple cider. And this was, oh, my daughter was about a year old. So 16 years ago or so. And so I think Ireland was ahead of its time. Uh, so you either had a, you either had a, um, a Guinness or you had these, hard apple cider. I think they were called blums. So we used to think that we're talking about having cocktails while we're doing this. Um, and you know, this week for most of us in California, at least, um, our kids went back to school online, by the way, I already heard from some people in California, their kids are getting to go back to real school starting next week. And I'm like, what? well, not in, not in central California. Cause we've got to oh. be out of that, out of that, you know, status for 14 days before the kids can go back. But anyways, so your kids and my kids started going back to school at zoom school, right? Yes. And, um, how was it for your kids? Cause you know, they look at this and it's not that big of a deal anymore. You know, um, Emma is just cruising right along. She's, you know, engaged and, you know, um, I think AJ's having a little more fun with it, you know, as an eighth grader, uh, eighth grader boy. We have not had any of the pranks, but should we bring on our guest? Cause I think she'd been appreciate yeah. hearing about this. And I want to hear what your kids have experienced because I, I saw some notices go across um, my email and, and, and Instagram and stuff about some of the stuff that is happening uh, on zoom uh, in, in the high school and middle school level. So yeah. let's bring my, why don't you introduce uh, yeah. our guest this week? I think that'd be more appropriate. I mean, we're both friends of hers, but I think you know her a little better than I do. So, well, I think more appropriately said, she knows me a little bit better because, yeah, because I, I have been, I have been in the sniper crosshairs of Yvonne Arnold's in the past in a good way. And I'm just going to tell you when you and I were talking about who could we have on that would really like communicate to in, a, in, a, in an articulate way to the new agent, to the experienced agent, to the veteran, to the newbie rookie about systems, about technology, about a roadmap for a blueprint rather for you know, growing their business. And we, we said, Yvonne Arnold. Yvonne, and she did, was so, yep. She yeah. said she was so gracious to say yes. And so here she is an amazing coach, um, a top producing agent, and then an all around great gal. So welcome Yvonne. Cheers. Happy Cheers. Day. Cheers. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, comfortable with his, uh, his cider. Yeah. I am first, completely comfortable. I have a pen and a pencil here because I had to write a few things down that you guys were talking about. What the heck is hard kombucha? Yeah, I mean, right. I know what kombucha is, but hard kombucha? It's yeah. like, never heard of that. Well, so they ferment the tea leaf, and I'm not sure how they infuse like different flavors. They have grapefruit. They've got, I don't know, uh, black cherries, a, a great tasting flavor, lemon. And so, but somewhere in that fermenting process that they do dry, so it eliminates the sugars, it ends up being alcoholic. You know, quite a bit. Like they, it ranges anywhere from like 4.5 to, to like 7.8. 
eight. Wow. Yeah. So you guys are picking on me for my cider, and this cider is like five and a half. No, it's six. Six percent. Oh. Calling it pansy. Okay, Come let's on. say what I said earlier off camera. I basically said that you were drinking a girl drink. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. Some girls can drink whiskey too. And that's and I cannot and, and I cannot. I am not a whiskey girl. Give me vodka rocks and I'm all good. Yeah, I know that about you. That's why I said that. <laughs> so we've, um, and, we've had a I'm, few of those conversations at the bar. And I'm a ginger, but I'm not. A t I'm not Irish. I'm French Italian. So I, I stayed away from that because I wasn't quite sure if that meant. But I can drink like an Irish girl. So, <laughs> but <go>. no <laughs> <laughs> So thank so you guys for having me on. No, Andy, thanks for being here. Andy, you know, he spent the hundred dollars you gave him and told you, told everyone how awesome you were. Um, no, but, but really tell everyone like where you're from, how you got started. Give, give us the elevator speech, 60, 90 seconds of who yeah. you are. So our audience as a good, wait a minute. Now we're now timing our guests. Well, cause like, we're going to have a lot to talk about today. And Do we get to uh, time it when you're talking too? Cause no. <laughs> I feel like the city council meeting, I was at a city council meeting yesterday, uh, in Sandpoint, Idaho. And, uh, you know, if you stood up and talk, it was a three minute timer. And then the attorney came in and said, please sit down. You're done. <laughs> so wow. there's no attorney that's going to come in and stop me after 90 yeah, seconds. We, right? And we don't even have a timer. So you're good. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. Night elevator speech. Um, I actually started answering phones for my brother's real estate office at 14 years old. Uh, I was, he was uh, 14 years, he's a 14 years older than me. And, um, and from there, in fact, Bill Pipes did a real success with me. You guys can look at it on, on YouTube, but he came up with the, oh, you're with original ISA. Cause all wow. I did was I went there after school and I cut out the ads from the ma magazines and the enterprise enterprise. And I taped them onto a notebook. And then when people would call, I'd go, what are you calling on? Oh, the press enterprise tick. And I would, track and measure the calls. And then I would forward the call to somebody on the up desk. And um, so that was 14 years old. And then from there, I was in escrow and title and um, got my license in 1989 at 24 years old, 25 years old. And um, and then I started with my husband at Remax in 1994 in a crashed market in California when the aerospace industry went out. I left a really great paying title rep job at First American Title with a company car and a company credit card and went to work with my husband. I mean, I'm not smart. You guys have me on here. You think I'm smart? Well, you're a lot smarter <laughs> now than you were back then. How about that? So you were once upon a time a title rep person. Like I was. Like you in offices and said, use me. Realtors were my clients. Yeah. I, I married one. My, my husband was one of my clients. Yeah. So... <laughs> Funny, huh? So, so did John own the business? His parents did. They were they started the Remax um, franchise in Corona and Riverside in 1987, and then he joined in 1992. Uh, right. now, and he and I are very similar kind of personality types. We we are two days apart in birthdays, so we're both Virgos. Um, right. And he left in '92 his business, which was construction, general contractor building homes, because the crash. He lost seven contracts to build seven houses and went and got his license and went into real estate. <laughs> so how often did you take him to lunch as a title rep? Uh, he used to take me to lunch, believe it or not. Um, oh. he, they were a family that would not allow their affiliates to pay. Wow. Because their philosophy was, I don't need you to buy me lunch. When I call you with a problem on my deal, I need you to fix it. Ooh, I like that. So yeah. Like so I learned old school style. His mom is a 47 year real estate agent in California. Um, and uh, so I learned from the best. They were my mentors mm -hmm. as well as Tom and his dad. And um, and I saw Tom for the first time on stage in 95 at his dad's dad's event. Wow. And uh, yeah. So never signed up for coaching. Um, my husband is frugal and said, we're never paying that monthly VIG. <laughs> so <laughs> so. Fast forward, 2007, I went and signed up for coaching when John wasn't around, didn't tell yeah. him, and uh, ended up becoming a coach. And so I- Who was so your first I, coach? Hmm? Who was your first coach? Kay Fairchild. Oh, cool. I know. Oh, so obviously. Kay, How cool was that? Kay and Debbie were my coaches, and, um, and then I became a coach in 2009. 
Andy, when wow. you went to the coaching program, was Kay the yeah. person running it? Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, yeah she was a very trainer. cool. She was yeah. actually a coach of mine for a minute when Marion Curran wasn't. Got it. So yeah, that's my my elevator speech. I've been around a long time. Um, a lot of stuff used to phase me, and now it doesn't phase me much at all. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so I tend to be the sniper fire person because, mm -hmm. as Andy mentioned, because it's you know what I'm not tied to the outcome and. And um, with real estate, it's, I love it. It's um, always changing um, and it's fun still. So I still do sell real estate in two states, um, Southern California, Riverside Corona Market uh, for 30 years now and uh, Sandpoint, Idaho, our second home for, uh, which is where I'm at, my happy place and uh, been up here for 17 years and don't do a whole lot of business up here, but um, you know, I got a couple of deals going right now. I'm, How's the market in Idaho? Like, I just know, like I've, everywhere else. I've been to Coeur d'Alene. Okay, so we're 45 minutes north of Coeur d'Alene. Oh, so wow. we're 60 miles south of the Canadian border. Um, oh, wow. And it's it's hot. Uh, we have a lot of, it's a resort community, of course. We have a town of 8,000 people, a county of 40,000, and, um, and Big Lake, second largest lake west of the Mississippi, plus a ski resort. So it's a retirement kind of zone, really. Um, we developed a 35 lot subdivision here in the area and probably, um, well, I would say probably 95% of the people in there are retirees. Got it. Interesting. I didn't know that about you, the builder yeah. side with John. That's now my, cool. my, I'm actually a daughter of a builder. My dad wow. and uh, was a, a general contractor in Hemet, California yeah. from 1959 on. Uh, so for like 50 years. And then my brother was also a developer. My husband's a builder, general contractor, and his father was a general contractor out of Norco, California. So you you actually are kind of real estate part-time on the side with all that construction. We didn't have a choice, either John or I, to even do anything but go into real estate. <laughs> so, so Yvonne, before we go to um, what we want to talk about today, guys, if you're watching, is the, I wrote it down so you could see it later, but systems. And we want to talk about two types of systems, the technology systems and the people systems from a systems expert. I'm just going to talk high level, probably not too granular. But we were before we brought you on, we were talking about how, you know, all of our kids have been immersed into the technology systems that the school districts have adopted. And primarily it's it's Zoom and you laughably watching some of the teachers um, try to I can't imagine manage a certain number of kids and teach them and manage the all the discipline things that you have to to deal with. So, um, one of our one of my children had a prank played where the um, login was borrowed by somebody else that didn't belong to the school and Is this the that Kasner kid. One? Kasner one. Yeah. Okay. And um, I wasn't going to name the school, but thanks, Jay. So, uh, but so the so the, this kid hops on and proceeds to use profanities and a couple of hand signals, and then bounces off. The best part is teachers scrambling to how do I how do I knock them off? How do I mute? How do I eject? What do I do here? There's been a couple of those. My son, who's at Clovis West, also shared some stories similar to that. It seems to be the prank that kids are doing. And the funny part is that the kid that's coming in to do it, borrowing the login, doesn't go to school there. Um, the other story is I, I'll share real briefly is the number of kids, one of ours included, that have been caught. So here's their laptop, right? And on the back side of the laptop is the TV and their PlayStation's connected to it. Oh, so I love it. they're nodding. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like they're engaged in this class. Teachers thinking she is a rock star. Oh yeah, and I, so I busted. I busted our son for it, and he goes, "There's so many other kids doing the same thing on this class." I am class. still going to ask my coaching clients if they're doing that while I'm on the call with them. <laughs> See, but one to one, <laughs> it's different. They're so engaged in what I'm saying. They're like I'm astounded. <laughs> no, you know, uh, it's funny because um, I I was talking to uh, one of my clients' teams the other day, and they all are, it's an all women team and they um, all have children and they're all top rock star team members. Like they're pending eight in one week and 14 deals in another week. And it's crazy. And then they've got these kids at home 
and they're doing this distance learning and they're trying to manage all that. And I'm like, wow, I have like right. so much more respect even above and beyond what I did already. Right. But I was like, you know what? Give them recess. <laughs> yeah, you have to yeah. remember, I'm a no kids, no pets, no plants, no fish girl. Okay, I got nothing. And I'm like, well, you know, I can't keep a coaching client on like here for 30 minutes sometimes. They're like, squirrel, squirrel. How are you going to do that? Just let him go out to recess yeah. in the middle of the classroom. Just let him go out to recess. <laughs> you so know how my kids would get raised if I had any. <laughs> we had um, we had Coach Christy Jenks on this show a few weeks oh, ago and talk about badass in this season, right? With seven kids and you know, amazing real estate team and the production. And she's just like, yeah, it's no big deal. We got it. She's actually uh, watching right now, by the way, awesome. Christy is. And so uh, Yvonne and I have messages on a few different screens. So uh, Christy says, hi. And, you know, I, I'm going to give a shout out to Meryl, her husband. He is on day like 18, I think. The water fast. The water fast only. And Yvonne, we've talked a lot of health and nutrition before. Yeah. At different retreats and stuff yeah. um he's 18 days now 18 and a half Meryl I'm sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm 18 19 somewhere around there but he's going because for when you're over 14 days of a water fast you start to count the tenths of a day well is that what happens <laughs> yeah well the other day I said hey man you're, you're over halfway and so um mm. that's just so it takes so much mental toughness yeah to be able to um not have anything in your body but water I mean holy hell like at some point, um, you, cause I've gone on a liquid cleanse. Cause you guys know I've done the a raw foods cleanse like every quarter since January of 2019. Um, and I, I've done a, at the end of that, I do a liquid cleanse. So it's not as water, it's a broth and that, but, um, I've gone five days straight. And then I was just like, it's weird because your body doesn't need certain things. And, uh, it's then becomes a mental game. It's, mm -hmm. it is a mental game um, because you have to think when you smell somebody cooking food yeah. or it, it, it triggers a lot of other things, you know, your brain's telling your body and your stomach to do certain things. Um, have you ever done Dr. Wayne Dyer's uh, visualization? No. What's that? With, with the lemon. So hey, everybody, here we go. <laughs> So Dr. Wayne Dyer does a visualization, you know who he is. So he's written a lot of books um, mm -hmm. and uh, he does a visualization of a lemon and he says, close your eyes. You know, I won't go through it all because it'll take too, too much time, but you close your eyes and then he starts telling you to, okay, now picture a lemon. Now picture cutting it in half, smell it. Do you smell it? And just, and then, you know, squeeze it a little. Do you smell that some more? And then you taste it. And, and he says, now taste that lemon. There's no lemon involved. There's just a visualization. Right you start to pucker the 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 fluids in your mouth start flowing there's no lemon around you know so your brain has a lot to do with what we we do in our diets and everything else so Love very it. intriguing to me i, I believe uh, that works 100 percent um yeah your, your brain is so absolutely strong and mm -hmm. uh, anyway shout out to to, to christy like yeah. Andy, that amazing woman and mom and wife and friend and then, and then of course meryl for just kicking some ass you know you're when you know he was significantly over the 400 mark he's now in the threes and um he just he's probably less than that after the water fast uh, well, he's, he's like 398, 397, somewhere around there. He'll put on about 10 when he comes off. So, but he'll he'll do it. I, I have no doubt. That I think he probably dropped some after that July chicken wing market update deal. Did you guys see that? <laughs> I was oh like, my gosh, that was awesome and hilarious. Wait, he wasn't on the water cleanse when he did that, right? No, no, this was back in July. He July, did it. Okay. But, but he did, when he, the, I, I messaged him. I said, dude, that was hilarious. I watched to listen to your groans that the, 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 the spice was absolutely kicking his butt. And it was so funny, but he tied it into all the different segments of price in the Phoenix market and how different things were hotter. So of course he ended up in the lowest price range and he had to, to what's the hottest at, at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings? Uh, Blaze? Is that Blaze, right or yeah. Anyways, Ludicrous. He is like dripping in sweat. He has to eat the whole wing. That was the rule. And his mouth and lips are on fire and he couldn't drink anything. Yeah. 
I mean, that was torture. Talk about, yeah, no, talk about taking one for the team. Okay, we've <laughs> got to jump into our topic because um, – what's up, Donna? Thanks for watching. Because uh, it's Dang. a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat on the bones, right? Yeah. Um, Those chicken wings. <laughs> systems. So, Yvonne, I'm going to put it in context. And this isn't a coaching conversation. This is 100% specialty that you have um, about systems. Virtual systems is what you've done a lot in the TF ecosystem. You're about to be a panel speaker, a panel leader, um, or lead several panels at the summit in a couple of weeks. Super excited to hear those. And mm. if you guys have, are watching this and you haven't got tickets to it, you've got to because it's going to be amazing and you could do it from home. Um, so imagine an agent who's not in startup mode, but maybe they're a year or two in and they're doing somewhere between 15 to 30 transactions. What would you recommend as the bare minimum systems, both from a people like assistance or, and or technology systems? So it's interesting. Um, what I learned over the years, and we were systems users from day one. So 1994, I go to work in real estate. My husband had gotten a, company, a system called Goldmine. I don't know if you guys ever heard of I that. I Goldmine. I programmed okay. Goldmine, yeah. So wow. Goldmine was, yeah. So Goldmine was uh, hard drive based, okay? So it wasn't cloud-based back then. So when I would go into the office, I only worked in Goldmine. So I never had a Gmail email. I never had an Outlook email because Goldmine had its own email client. Now I'm speaking in these terms because people don't understand email client when you deal with, and, and just in the last few years have people figured out what's an email client? Well, if you have a system, any of the systems we talk about, whether it's, um, you know, starting with Contactually, which syncs with Gmail, which is the email uh, client, yeah. or something like a Realvolve or a Boomtown or something like that, they have email clients inside of them. Okay. And yeah. so, so when I worked with Goldmine, I just knew that I had a contact management system where all my database was in there. And I was in charge of making sure that we had everybody in the system because my mother-in-law was not even in that realm. I mean, we were still on paper folders, manila folders, you know, oak filing cabinets, multiple of them and all of that. But I would go in there and I would, keep stuff in there. So back in 94, I was already systematizing it. And so when we started moving forward in about 2007, I, I started looking at things like, well, I want to be web-based. I want to be able to, I don't want to be tied to having this computer have to go with me anywhere. So the cloud was kind of new. It was starting to come around. So Goldmine was like $4,000 to go turn over into the web-based version. Well, we weren't going to You had that. to sync up, right? You, it, you had it, to it sync up. You started, it, it was funky. So the very first system I went into was Wise Agent. Mm -hmm. And so I picked up Wise Agent. And, um, was and Wise Agent a full, full system or was it just CRM still back then? It was CRM. Um, it was probably the best one that you could get besides maybe Realty Juggler was still was out there at the time. Yep. You know, they were all starting to kind of come out. And so I picked up that and then I was like, okay, this really isn't doing what I needed. And then Tom started talking about Contactually. So I switched over to that. And they so- I love Contactually. I was the biggest fanboy. I was too. And I still am. I still use it. I haven't switched off of it yet. Oh, and you're the, oh. No, I haven't. And the problem is, is that, so because I'm tied to certain systems now and, and, and I'm not a high performer, I'm not doing hundreds of deals or I'm, I'm doing 20 to 30 deals a year. Okay. And as an agent. So when I look at systems, I go, okay, what do I need? And you talk about an agent who's doing 50 to 30 deals. Well, that's me. So I go, okay, what do I need? Right. I need a contact management system, which in virtual edge that I launched and did for Tom in June and wrote the program for that two day event. I call contact management systems, a Rolodex on steroids. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is it, everything cannot be called a CRM. I'm sorry. I get Again, you know, I'm biting my tongue. I want to just like, I, I know, I know. Say it, say it. <laughs> no, no, no I told him that's his soapbox. We need to hear yours. I'm so passionate about this topic. Like I just, I know. So like, am I. And I'm like, so I have had conversations with like Troy Mixon at Boomtown and, you know, people at Realvolve and all these places. And I'm like, you are not a CRM. Stop calling yourself that. I, I, Yvonne, I didn't know we had this in common. 
We do. We're like, I'm going to give you two a minute. You could drop me off the show. I'll be back. <laughs> There's a difference between a CRM and an LMS. Lead <laughs> management system. You just wow. shared the acronym. Oh my God, I love you right now. Wow. Um, See, she's the ginger is running to her cheeks right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put my mom in Boomtown. Seriously, I um, no, you are not going to put your right. mom in Boomtown. Okay, so so when I look at it, I go, okay, a agent, any agent, new agent or twenty year veteran doing five deals to thirty deals a year needs a Rolodex on steroids CRM. Okay, and that system can do a couple of things depending on what you pick. It can be a lead management system, LMS, because you're calling your leads and the, they're advanced enough to now to feed leads from Zillow and open houses and Facebook ads and all that yeah. into them. Almost every single one is able to do that. Yep. And if they can't, they can zap them with a Zapier or they, you know, whatever. So, yep. so you have to have that. That is the base system. So to Andy's point, that is it, right? I don't care which so one you would, get. You would say 15 to 30, you don't need transaction management system. You don't even necessarily need an assistant. Uh, yes, you do. So, which here, one? <laughs> so then we go into the next layer, okay? So you're okay. an agent doing 20 deals a year and you can, you're can you doing that for two, three years in a row and you're capped out. You can't get beyond that because you're pushing paperwork all day long. You're sending in California, you're sending out, you know, 37 disclosures documents in a package. You're trying Don't to get it back in. You're, you're doing peds, you know, COVID disclosures. You're running showing time, but not today because they were broken. Um, and <laughs> so, you know, you're doing all this. So you need an assistant. Okay. That's the first thing. The assistant comes in when you get to about 20 transactions so that you can go to 40 if you choose, or you can just take every weekend off or nights off. Okay. So that's the key. You're buying either time with an assistant or you're buying the ability to do more deals. So that assistant's going to work inside that CRM. Now, transaction management system. If you guys watched anything about the virtual edge, I did a spaceship. <laughs> I have a story about that. So I'm at the elite retreat last January and I'm doing a breakout session and there's, I don't know, 40 people in the room, 50 people in the room. And I'm on a, on a, you know, a board, of writing and I make a table with three legs. This is kind of boring. The tabletop is your hub. It's your command central. It's your, um, it is your Google drive or your uh, Dropbox folders that stores your documents. Okay. And then the ta the legs of the table are contact management system, Rolodex on steroids, transaction management and lead management. So I draw this thing and coach Doug Hannon says, you remember that spaceship thing you drew at Elite Retreat? <laughs> and I go, spaceship? What are you talking about, spaceship? spaceship? And he goes, well, that spaceship, you know, you drew a circle and it had these beams coming off of it. So you said contact management, transaction management, and... Lead management. Yep. LMS. So there it is. See that? That's a table with three legs in, to my like world. rocket ship going to the moon. There you go. You guys all think in space. So I went with... Doug Hannon's spaceship. So I liked it because when I did the virtual edge, those legs became beams. So beam me up, Scotty, right? <laughs> and the command central at the top is your assistant sitting in a big high back leather chair with massive computer systems in front of her or him. And they are making sure that you are flying this ship through the meteors of transactions and past black holes and you're gonna get to your next. Planet. Oh, now you're now you're you mocked our space analogy, but now you're embracing it. Yeah, I embraced it, good. and I took it back to my battleship Galactica days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, so a lot of people have no idea what that's about, Battlestar Galactica, but I do. But right, okay, at, at fifty-five year old, I have this. I think the War of the remember that. What was the movie? It was based upon a book. Tom Cruise was in it. Were he just saw. He's the dog that just saw the squirrel running by right now. Yes, ahead, he just took off. Did she say it? War, War of the Worlds or what is it? I don't remember that movie because I wasn't. Spaceships a look like the spaceships look like Andy's drawing. See, right? They got the three, and they got the leather. Oh, chair. they were that bad. Yeah, leather chair. Bad. Or you know, you could go Star Trek and Deep Space Nine, whatever you like. Okay, but okay, you just so have, have to remember. I have a question. 
yes. squirrels coming back. So if you're if you are the fifteen to thirty, this is the this is the full okay, no. top for the fifteen. Fifteen to thirty, to 30 is going to be the top command central, and that's either you yourself, and that's it, me myself and I, okay. and I'm command central, and I'm contact management, and I'm transaction management. Yeah. Because your contact management system is going to be your lead management system. Because all your leads are going to feed into yep. wise agent or realty juggler or whatever, right? Okay. Now, what I found out, because see, when I say I, I'm still on contactually, because back in 2012, 2011, uh, we got dumped into a short sale world because there weren't, we were foreclosure agents, we were REO agents. And uh, there were no assignments because of the lawsuit, the $25 billion lawsuit between the banks and the, and the government. So they stopped foreclosing. So the REO agents, the numbers of REOs just dropped to the floor. And we had to do short sales because that was all that was left in California. There was nobody that had any equity in 2011. And so, um, so in 2011, I was doing short sales and got in with Tom because Tom introduced us to Bank of America's DTS program. Yeah. We got the short sale um, leads from Bank of America being associated with Tom and coaching. And so we're out there knocking doors on short sales and I'm doing them with, and I was pissed because I was already techie and I was pissed because it's like, I'm standing at a fax machine and I'm faxing all these packages to those damn asset managers who go, Oh, we missed that page. We didn't get that page. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to kill somebody. And so, and I'm doing it all on Evernote because I'm paperless already in our office. We were already paperless. And I'm like, okay, something's got to give here. So I went to the Remax convention in January, 2012. And I walked through the expo and I saw these guys. Well, it was short sale commander had changed their name to realty commander. Yep. So I walked up to them and here's Eric Lovell and uh, Randy Toby and they're, you know, Eric designed the program. They're out of Michigan. They were realtor investors who developed Realty Commander, Short Sell Commander. And they needed to figure out how they were going to do all these deals that they were buying and selling and doing all this stuff. I said, show me your product and do it in five minutes because I'm a driver and I only do bullet points. And so he goes, all right. And he showed me five minutes and I went, sign me up. So starting in 2012 in January, I did in 2012, 42 short sales by myself, negotiated listing side with no assistant because I got Realty Commander as my transaction management system. Good systems. And then because I was saying, I, I called him up and I'm like, hey, you know me now. I had cocktails with you over at the Chandelier Bar in Vegas. Well, I need you to connect to my contactually. So what happened was, is I don't have to double enter anymore. I now am using a transaction management system that talks through an API key to contactually. And as long as all my contacts are in there, all I have to do when I do open the deal is move them over and, and it sinks and it pulls everybody over into the transaction. So now I'm able to do a lot of deals as a solo agent with no assistant. And those were the hardest deals you could do, as you know, by sure. yourself. So that's where transaction management evolved. So now I'm thinking, okay, there's got to be a product that's a CRM transaction management system together. So as I was researching and stuff like that, Realvolve came into the radar. Mm -hmm. So Realvolve is a transaction management and Rolodex on steroids combined. So a lot of my coaching clients and people that I know and people that I've talked about it, they have gone there. Okay. Now, what happens with all these tech companies? They get acquired. They get acquired. Or they try to do a gazillion more things other than the two or one thing they design themselves to do. Correct. That's kind of what Showing Time's going through right now. Well, here's the deal. Realty Commander got bought by Showing Time and stopped innovating. Yep. Because they okay. acquired. They Contactually got bought by Compass. So a lot of people went, oh, I don't want Compass to have all my contacts. Okay. Right. That happened. And then Realvolve got bought by Firepoint. Mm. So now so we now have all these products that are actually very good products, but they're not innovating and they are now owned by an entity that has other plans for them. Yeah. Like, just like Zillow bought Dotloop. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Right. So now 
I'm like, okay. What's going to be interesting is the Sky Slope getting acquired by Fidelity. Uh, interesting, yes. That's going to yeah. be interesting because they're considering their so many tremendous. brokerages use, yeah. you know, that product. Well, thankfully, Fidelity is not a broker, but still having one massive tax plant. They own some brokerages, but they don't own it as Fidelity. No, and they own Paragon, and they own mm -hmm. lots of other things. Big data plant. Big, big, big data. Uh, Bill Foley, the owner of that, is a really brilliant guy. Yep. And uh, one of these days, our paths are going to cross. He had he bought Big Mountain over in Whitefish, so he owns the ski resort over there. And you know, so he had a restaurant here in Sandpoint, Idaho, for a while under his restaurant umbrella. So yeah, one of these days, <laughs> wineries we go to, all of that stuff. Anyway, I diverse. So um, so now we have systems, and now I'm looking at. Okay, so now you're saying, okay, what do you need? Well, you need some sort of transaction management system to automate. Because we have too much happening now. There's way too much activity. It's too fast. Texting, clients that are seeing stuff online. You can't keep up if you are by yourself as a solo agent without an assistant and no technology. You just can't keep up. And so when, when I look at that, I go, okay, if a, an individual agent needs something, get the assistant first. That assistant needs to be the opposite personality of that agent. That is the biggest mistake most people make. We could do a whole other show on that subject alone, but for the sake of conversation, it's because they need to fill in the gaps of the person that's leading it, right? Yeah, they need to be an organizational thought process person. They cannot mm -hmm. be an artist. Uh, they cannot be high eye, interpersonal, you know, really active because they're too chatty Cathy. So that's very important to go very deep into that hiring process and find the right person or go virtual. There's a lot. A solo agent can have a virtual assistant that does listing coordination, transaction coordination and some marketing. Yep. And if they will work in your systems, a lot of them will, then you're good because now you have oversight of them through your systems. That's a key factor in my book. Now, moving on to the systems, now a solo agent needs contact management, Rolodex on steroids, the ability to feed leads into it, and the ability to do automated um, tasks so that they don't have to remember what's coming next on that listing. Right. Okay. Did I remember to put that on my front page of my website for marketing? Did I remember to post my, my tour factory virtual tour on social media for that new listing? See? Mm -hmm. So those are task lists that almost every product that you can find will automate that. So Trello, Trello is actually a very good option for a solo agent to use. And if you get the paid version, it you can uh, auto it, you know, hook it up to your Gmail and your Google calendar, send you emails to tell do you. you hey, do you use Trello? I use Trello for a do doing done board. However, I have some clients that use Trello at a high level. Maureen Folan in Queens, New York, number one agent in the market. She's amazing. You should see her Trello boards for her um, transaction management. They're all built out. I'm going to do, in fact, I'm going to do a, an interview with her all about that. Because I'd love to see that. I, for some reason, I just can never get my head around Trello. Like, I just can't. Like, I don't, and I'm so visual. I just, everything else, all these other programs, Got it. But when it comes to Trello, I just, I'm like deer in a headlight. Like, oh, I, 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 I don't know. I just, yeah, I couldn't either because I couldn't get my head wrapped around building it out. I like mm -hmm. systems that are meant for real estate agents, built for them, that are somewhat out of the box. So, mm -hmm. one of the products that's coming up that I really want to get my hands on and into, and I'm going to go reach out to him again. I want to get into the beta testing of the transaction management of CSU. Um, I have a story for you to share, but I have to do it offline because oh. I have a client that is really going deep with CSU on that. Good. I'm a, I'm a fan of CSU. Hey, I, I think I interviewed him. The, the, the more that I use CSU, the more I really like Brilliant it. Brilliant guy. Um, I didn't like CSU, Jason. Um, in the beginning, I'm a CTE I person. Um, because CTE is not pretty, it's not a user interface, um, but it's a business intelligence that works really, really well. And when I started having, I mean, literally every single one of my clients is, is on CTE 
and only a couple of them has switched now over to Sisu, but they have to have one of those. They can't be in my schedule if they don't have one of those. And, and the catch is, is that because I coach the high level people, that's their business intelligence. And I can sit there and, and I look from a 10,000 foot view at this, this business intelligence. I can see their team members tracking how many conversations they're having. The numbers start talking to me. And then I am easily able to tell that team lead, Hey, you've got an issue over here. You need to go shadow that agent. You need to go help this person do that. And it makes it much more easy. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are watching our program, uh, so how would you how would we describe CSU? Just think about like tracking of numbers and and every number possible. Um, I, I'm pulling up uh, someone I coach is more. Can, right can I give you a, can I give you what I like to say, Jay, on that? Yeah. yeah, yeah take yeah. take the old the old adage of what you measure you can improve, and you look at most CRMs, they don't do a good job of giving you a dashboard to see what you've been doing. Everything you've been doing is in that CRM. Well, what CSU and CTE do well is they pull the data out. CTE, you have to tell it what you did. CSU track, tracks it by a Zapier typically, or RealSync or PySync or one of those. I think it's RealSync. And it connects it automatically and pulls it so you can see in this dashboard everything that's going on. Picture a speedometer or tachometer for every area of your business as granular as you want to get. What you measure, we can improve. Yeah. Yeah. Things like, I mean, there's so much data here. I just, I, you know, without the client's permission, I'd hate to share, but you know, you got um, buyers showings, um, I don't know, thank you cards, prepared CMAs, referrals requested. I mean, doors knocked, you know, five-star reviews left, uh, hours prospected. I mean, it's anything and everything you want, basically. Um, so, with that, my adage is you're looking for products that play in the sandbox with others. And when I had the conversation with, um, what's Sisu's founder's Brian. name? Brian. Brian. Yeah. When I had the conversation with him, um, his whole goal was he didn't want to build the end all be all product that did everything. He wanted to be a product that does certain things, but that will play in the sandbox with others. So he is opening up that API to as yeah. many products as he can. Well, and that's what he did for us. We we use Sierra. It's still Zapier connected, and that's really because Sierra hasn't fully integrated with Sisu. But the moment that they integrated with Skyslope, it's becoming a game changer. Because now yeah. what's happening is Skyslope is really becoming, instead of a transaction management, it's becoming a document management system. And Sisu becomes all of the actual tasks, the things that happen in the transaction management system. So it's, just so you know, awesome. Skyslope was never in my world a transaction management system. Skyslope is a broker compliance system. And it does a good job at that. It does a great job at that. Okay. I mean, we were at Remax and our broker had Relay, if you guys remember that product. Oh, yeah. Archaic. That, that product right? was yeah. down quick. Yeah. And so when, when we had Relay, that's what we went paperless in 2009. And we had to load everything into Relay. Otherwise, we didn't get our checks. And so... Finally, when they upgraded and went to Skyslope, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, this is wonderful. But then what I realized as a coach and dealing with a lot of people that had Skyslope, if you are a team, uh, if you're an agent, say I'm an agent over there at Fres, yes. And, and Jason has Skyslope as the broker compliance. I cannot, under his license as a member of that one, create my own task list that I have a certain protocol to for my customer experience in my right. files. Yes, yeah, Skyslope, have I've said it, is a very one-to-one -one relationship with the task to the lead agent. Correct. You can't bring in the client. You can't bring in the other agent. You can't integrate mm -hmm. any of those tasks. Nope. And the notification is still bad. Yes. So that's where these are wonderful products and you know anybody that says i'm looking for i'm looking for the magic one it's there isn't one you know and here's the trick to all of it and you guys know as coaches and as active broker owners and realtors um you have to block time out to learn the product you cannot dish it off on somebody else yeah. you have to at least know the basics so you know that that other person you dished it off to is doing it right yeah, we just had that conversation today. I'll admit I've, we don't use Slack here, but we're going to 
I think we're going to start. And uh, Megan was in my office today and we've opened Slack up and I've shown her what I know. And she goes, so do you only just send invites out to everyone in the office? And I no. said, no, 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 no. Like you are going to become the expert first, right? When you and I can absolutely teach this program, then we'll invite everyone else. I, I'm curious program. why you guys are looking at Slack over Facebook workplace. Um, well, uh, all the, every Zillow flex partner, I think 90% of them are using it. Uh, and so I'm just, I keep running into people who are using it. It's driving me crazy. So I'm just trying I to figure tell out you why. why, Yvonne, like I'm Google Hangouts and chats. I was and like, I was like putting a ball on the tee for Yvonne right there. <laughs> You're so good, Andy. Um, the less you can drive your agents into Facebook for any purpose whatsoever, Ooh. the better. Okay, so let me let me defend that. Love Facebook that. Workplace has nothing to do with Facebook. It's not has an app Facebook. like Messenger. It's not even in Facebook. But it has an app. It, it's outside, separate. Yeah. When you're Facebook, in it, is Facebook it like workplace? Messenger? Okay. Yeah. When you're yeah, in it, you, can, you can't see any of your Facebook messengers inside Workplace Chat. I understand. Your, but when your you're, photos and stuff, though. When, when you're in when you're in Workplace, yeah. Just like when you're in Messenger. Up at the very top, does it have that little arrow that takes you back to Facebook? No. It doesn't. No. Good to know. I don't know. I kind of think it does. Let me see. There's got to the be a back end because Facebook wants you back in Facebook. I'm telling you. It says at the, the settings, it says from Facebook. So they Everything. just built a separate alone standing product. And the and the paid the paid idea here is it unlocks more things when you pay at a higher level. But I'm telling you, the the, the real when you pay for it, it starts connecting more products. If you want to connect okay. more, just like Slack, Jay, if you want to connect more things, I'm just saying our ecosystem already uses workplace. So Why here's my next question. Different? Who do you think will buy Slack and who will buy Facebook? I don't what's think anybody's going to buy Facebook because it's a publicly traded company. Right. So the what's the longer play? Slack is definitely on the table. Slack's definitely on the table for sure. Okay. And let's see. We got to focus. Oh my goodness. No, no, okay. we are focused because I think what we've done, if I'm, if, if I'm, forgive me for turning away from the mic, if we are building this out, we're kind of now talking about stuff that's way down here in production, you know, people that are not 30 plus, 50 plus, but 100 plus that have right. a whole other tier of solutions. Stop in the name of love. Okay. What do we say, Andy, that we can turn, on, this, we can turn the show on and you and I could leave? And we know we'd be in good hands and it'd be done. Oh, we actually said that, Yvonne. Last week we go, Jay and I can just come off screen and she'll kill it. We're, we're good. Ah, uh, you guys are cute. So first off, here's what I would say. Even though, yes, we can take this whole thing and it's scalable up to whatever size you want to go, the spaceship <laughs> has to be there for a single solo agent. Because you are doing a Rolodex on steroids, which is your database that someday you may sell. Or someday you may sit on a beach and make your calls three hours a day for three days a week while you're sitting on the beach and send out referrals to somebody somewhere. Uh, are, so Yvonne, you and I are going to have to chat about this someday because we are so aligned with this. I've literally used that same analogy before. Oh my, more than, I mean, so many times and people don't understand what I'm talking about, but. Jason, you don't understand. You and I are brother sister from another mother. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I could see it in the hair color. I was well. I could grow this out and it'd be red. <laughs> and I've always wanted to shave my head, so it's all good. Well, this is really getting interesting because a few weeks ago, when we had Gogo -Go Bethke on here, Jason said he at one point was a female realtor. <laughs> You go back and watch the recording. He said it. Hey, that's not well, going to happen today, but okay. <laughs> I, don't know, and I don't know who the commenter is, but somebody coincidentally has asked, is the hairless hero of the lawnmower still for sale? Sounds like a prank. Yeah. That's okay. Prank. I don't know that. So anyway, if, if we move forward. So now you have the Rolodex on steroids, oh, which is your right. money. That is your lifeline. It's your past clients and sphere. It's everybody you ever come in contact with. It's other agents. It's mm -hmm. everybody. Contractors. First question I always ask people is, if you're sitting on a beach and somebody on your team needs the name of a plumber, what does your assistant do? And they go, oh, they call, they text me because I have it right here. I said, while you're on the beach, 
That's dumb, okay? So it should be inside the Rolodex on steroids under contractors. Yeah. So, so then that's the first piece that anybody, any agent, any level needs. Then transaction management, it's the customer experience. You are with that customer for more time during a 30 to day to five month period during the listing period to, to closing period. It's where all of the action happens for referrals and customer experience and whether or not they're going to like you or not. So your customer experience had better be like 100% on. And if you're, it's not, it's falling through the gaps. You're having things messed up. All of this happening. Example, one of my clients has an assistant. Assistant uh, is not doing her job with the systems the client has put in place. And they go to close and they actually close deals and some addendums didn't get signed for credit sure. during escrow. That costs money. You got to write a check and that is not a good customer experience. Right. Okay. Right. So when you have a transaction management system of any kind now, other than paper, I am, right. I am anti paper. I love notebooks. I make notes to myself all the time. Look, I have things I crossed off today. Today was my catch up day. I'm good. However, when you have stuff on deals that you have multiple transactions going, you've got to have automation telling you what's next. And every day you go in there. So when that happens, now you're going, ah, okay. I have a system for that. Trello. I don't care. Um, real Volve. Sisu, um, any system like one of my clients, past clients of coaching had Realty Juggler set up in the back end, built out all of her systems for transaction management it was awesome. OK, you have to learn the systems to build them out. So everyone again. So like I heard I don't know who said this recently, but it's been really just uh, it, it sits well. It just says, hey, like, don't leave it up to memory. Right. Like always go back to your systems. You can't scale without a system. You're gonna, it's just going to forget. You know, you just, in, in matter of fact, um, Corey, who runs our office, you know, like she has an amazing transaction coordinating team. And every once in a while, something will get missed. It's rare, but it happens. And immediately she knows that people have gone away from the systems. So she'll go back and go, remember those check sheets? Remember the pro program that we use? And they always go, yep. And I stopped using them. Okay, well, let's get back to the system so that we don't forget because we just get comfortable, right? Yeah. It's like brushing our teeth in the morning. Like we just, we just do it. So know? the problem I always see is the assistant or the agent gets rolling. They start using a system and then all of a sudden they divert back to sticky notes and notebooks and paper. And now shit's everywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, should we go back and use this now? Then the last thing is lead management and that ties into everything. I have a team right now, a team lead, one buyer's agent, one admin, and they're using Realvolve as all of it. Interesting. Because they can. They can go transaction management, Rolodex on steroids, and lead management until they get to maybe two or three buyer's agents on the team there it is. There it and is. start scaling okay. it. Now you've got to bring in the boom towns and the Sierra interactives and the Y Lopos and follow up boss, because you don't want the agents inside your Rolodex on steroids right, and exactly. your transaction management. You want them over here, make your calls, make your notes, set appointments, go on them, write contracts and repeat. Yeah. So Yvonne, I got to ask, because we're almost out of time and I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have you on this show without asking you, uh, you know, maybe to give back to you. Are you going to do the virtual edge again? I want to. Okay. So if you do it again, guys, if this amazing teacher, trainer, coach, speaker brings virtual edge back again, she goes there on this stuff in a much deeper way over the course of two days. Ironically, she did it virtually last time I saw, I didn't get to be there for the whole thing because of my schedule, but um, if you want to dive deep on some of this stuff, uh, look up Yvonne Arnold, Tom Ferry coach and speaker. So hopefully we'll get that on the other so side of summit. Just so you know, and a little inside scoop for your little crowd here, um, because of COVID and because we're not live in, in events yet, um, we're trying to come up with other options for that. So a little sneak peek, um, there could be a product coming out where we take that two day event 
and we break it into pieces and Modules. like three hours and mm -hmm. you get, this is this and you buy that product and you go watch it. And, and so how that will play out for once we're back in live and all of that, um, I don't know, but I'm excited to, I love the two day event. Uh, it's, it was really great that I got to be able to do that. And um, Tom allowed me to be a speaker now. And, and I wrote the program. I was like, Hey, I'd, I'd love to do it. Here's what I've got in my head. And he goes like, go for it. Love and it. Um, so, yeah, it's fun. Thank you guys. Uh, um I went to, or I'm currently attending Tom, Tony Robbins Business Mastery, oh. and it, it's online, right? And I mean, you know, Tony Robbins is energetic and dancing and yelling, and I mean, he's so like in your face. It's the event you want to go to in person. And so um, I had signed up many moons ago, and for whatever reason, it keeps moving back. And so they finally just said, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to do it online. And then all those who attend online, once the world opens back up, will you'll get an opportunity to go to in person as well. So you, it's almost like you're getting to go twice, yeah, but cool. it's been fun, Yvonne, to see how someone with so many resources like Tony Robbins puts this event together. And I tell you, he's got hundreds of people and they're all on zoom and they're all online and you can see pages and pages of people and you know, you're encouraged not to turn off your camera, you know, and they can unmute you. So if they, if Tony calls on you and then he built this, a uh, huge, uh, like, I don't know, um, like a I like guess, I don't know what, what a it's studio, like a, a huge well, studio. And he has a wall of videos with everybody on it. Yes. So and he's like, calling the audience there. Like he said, Jason to me today. And I was like, Oh yeah. What's up, Tony? You know, uh, it's just, it's amazing. Then he breaks people off into rooms. So he'll say, all right, we're going to break everyone into rooms and he'll just call people's names out. You know, Jason, Andy, Yvonne, you're in room two. And then all of a sudden your Zoom goes over and there's three people there. Wow. This is your topic and you're talking about it. And then he brings everyone back and says, okay, group number three, tell us what your big takeaway was or what was your big challenge with the three of you. And he sits, I mean, it's been amazing. So I'm hoping Tom's people or Tom's watching it and that's what he's bringing to Summit because uh, it's been awesome. Okay, so here's what I have to say about that. COVID sucks and has sucked from day one. However, the stuff that has come out of COVID, especially in our industry, I think there's a lot of stuff that is really cool yeah. and that we'll just keep because yeah. it, it works. And we, we could, we could probably talk about that for another hour about all the things that have advanced, like the virtual edge piece, all the things that have advanced in our in industry because we were forced to. Can I tell a quick story? Of course. Really quick. I'll do it really quick. We're so not, we're not on the clock. Okay. COVID happens. It's overtime. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting down there in California in my house and, and John's up here in Idaho. And, and so um, Tom posted on our Facebook page, the coaches page has, uh, who do you have that's done virtual listing presentations? And I'm like, well, my partner and I have been doing them for, several years now because I wanted to be in Idaho and he's down there in California and I have a bunch of people down there and he's like, okay, you're on. <laughs> I'm on what? Can, so can, can I see your presentation first? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't ask that. Are you he kidding? He knows you. Oh. He knows you. <laughs> so, so I go, okay. So he goes, we're going to go live on Facebook and we're going to start this virtual training. Oh, and it was the beginning of our pivot program. And, um, so like the night before, so I'm researching, it's like three days before the event and I'm researching, okay, how do I go live on Facebook and how do I do it where I can screen share and do all this? So I'm like doing the Google thing and, and I figured it out. I'm like, okay, I can go into a private group, but I, all I have to do is ask the office to make me an admin of his private group. That's all I need. <laughs> and I got it covered. So that night before I said, I texted him, I said, Tom, do you want to be on with me tomorrow? And he's like, yes and yes. You know, he'll never pass up an, op an opportunity for the camera. And I'm like, cool, yeah. let's do it. He's like, my team can help us with that. I go, no, I got it covered. I'm going to send you the invite. All I need your team to do is make me an admin. So I sent the whole thing. And they're like, well, I don't know about that. I said, no, just make me an admin. That's all I need. You can take me off the next day. And so they make me an admin. That morning, they still didn't believe that we could go live in a Facebook group through Zoom. <laughs> 
Now I had to buy, buy the 1599 version of Zoom a month. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm on account, so I did that. So I had to put Tristan and uh, Kelsey and, and online, I had to add them to my private group that I have going elsewhere and show them like an hour before the event was launching. So I did all that, get them on there and they're like, oh my God, this works. This is awesome. I'm like, yeah, isn't it great? This is cool, right? So then we bring Tom in and we do this whole thing on Facebook Live in our private group. I'm screen sharing. I'm showing them how I do a listing presentation, how, how I show them, like, here's the comps and here's this. And that was the beginning of Pivot. And then um. from that point forward, the juices started flowing of all the people inside the company and Pivot was born yeah. and it's history. And, and then it's, it's given like everybody, like so much opportunity and our clients that followed along, holy cow, you've, you've seen what they've done. It's like most of them didn't miss a beat, yeah. not a beat. No, exactly. Love it. I didn't know that story, but that's fun. Yeah. That's I didn't either. And I don't want to finish here. Sorry. I'm going to break down a few things. So Yvonne, real quick, like think of, um, you know, like we're, we're kind of hot seat kind of it, right? So Zero to 30, zero to 30, 30 ish transactions. You must have CRM, Rolodex on steroids, right? Transaction management system or a TC and a TC. Okay. For 30 transactions or under, you because feel like we want you to No, 30 transactions. You can do it with technology. You don't need a live person. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. when you get to that point, you're working a lot of hours. Yeah. You're working after hours because you're showing property and listing property during the days and you're working on paperwork at night. Okay. So oh, shout out to all the TCs out there in the world. But like that was a big thing for actually for Andy and I uh, back in our early days was he asked the question, what is it? What do you need in order to do more than the 40, 50 transactions you do every year? And I said, I need someone to handle the paperwork. Like yeah. I get ground in this stuff. I didn't get into this business to dot I's and cross T's. I got in this business to help people buy and sell homes. Exactly. And so when you take the leap of faith and you get into allowing someone to handle that for you, right? Who's probably better suited for it anyway. It if, opens, you hire, right? if you hire probably. right. If you hire right. Probably. It opens the door for you to you know, meet more people and do more transactions. Word of warning though, there are agents out there who will hire the TC and then use that free time to go play golf or uh, have an extra cocktail or get up at 10 o'clock in the morning instead of six or seven. And those people are the ones that very yep. quick, mm -hmm. right? So yep. now I want to scale or even more, right? Let's say I'm somewhere around that 35, 40 transaction mark. I've got my TC. I've got my CRM, I got my LMS, and I, but I'm, I'm wanting to do a hundred. What do I need? Do I have to hire somebody? If so, who do I hire first? Do I need another system? So usually what must, happens is- must, not the dream, the no. must. The must is boots on the ground. Now you need an outside licensed salesperson. Yep. I don't care what you call them. I call them a buyer's agent because for a reason. I want them to take the buyers that I don't want, which is the majority of them, because I'm going to turn myself into a listing agent. Okay. End of story. Because I can control my time as a listing agent way better than I can as a buyer's agent. That means that now I have time, like you said, not to go play golf unless I wanted to. And I have time now to really build out the base foundations of a business and the systems and make them better and scalable, bigger. And now I can build a buyer division and then I can add on a listing assistant and I can build a listing division. Cause see in my brain, I think like corporate. Corporations have divisions. They have a sales division. They have a customer service division. They have divisions. And a realtor needs to think the same way if they're building, if their goal and their desire is to go big. You have to break it down. You have specialists in their fields. And one thing, I, I'll never forget it. I said, to, I got brownies because of it, at cookies from Glenda Baker. Because Glenda. I was at I was at an event with her and she says, so Yvonne, um, so I have these agents and I'm going to let them do listings and buy sides. And I go, why would you do that? And she said, well, why wouldn't I? 
I said, Glenda, go back in time when you were an agent by yourself and you did listings and you did buy sites. You were capped at a certain amount because you had to take your buyer hat off and put your listing hat on. You had to take your listing hat off and put your buyer hat on. And they're two different styles. Buyers are more touchy feely, build the relationship, get them in, you're with them longer because you're trying to find houses for them, except for right now, you know, you're trying to find houses for them in any market. Sellers are like more direct. What are you going to do for me? How are you going to get my house sold? I don't need you to pansy PR me and make me feel fluffy bondy. I need you to sell my house. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different personality type. So now you get divisions and you build them out and train them accordingly. And then sometimes your buyer's agents, they get up to 30, 40, 50 deals a year. You, you all have teams that have agents who are only working buyers that are doing 40 deals a year or more as an agent, buyer's agent for a team. And that person then goes, I've been doing this for three years. I kind of like my weekends off. How do I do that team lead? Okay, let's see if we can move you and transition you into the, the listing division. That's God, it. That's great stuff. Let me ask you, because it just came up on, I think, another episode that we had of this, uh, Andy, um, is do you allow your buyer's agents to list property as well? Yeah. So that's the, that's the, the, the I just gave you the answer to the question. In my mind, you do not. You do not. You do not. Because it, it, again. Who was it, Andy, that felt exactly opposite than Yvonne recently? I, I guarantee you a lot of people do. But that's because <laughs> they are complying with what that agent wants, not with what they believe their vision is to build a business. Yeah, yeah I don't they remember want that agent, it was. They're appeasing the agent because the agent's like, I want to list these properties now. I don't want to just hand them over to somebody else on the team. I don't want to hand them to you. Well, why not? Well, I want to make money on it. Well, but you don't have the skill set to close for that listing appointment. You don't have the skill set to get a price reduction. You don't have a skill set to understand how we're going to market that property. Now See, you want to get into I, the training that's program? I, things? Great. That's where I sit as well. I think it's an entirely different skill set. One doesn't have to come necessarily before the other. Like you don't have to be a buyer's agent first. No. Uh, even though that seems to be the path, it doesn't have to be that way. But I think there is this like, okay, let's put you through like Yvonne's plan, right? Or whatever the team lead's name is. And, you know, and you say, okay, here's my expectations. Here's the skill set necessary to, 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 uh, to do that. And so let's go. And then you run them through the program and like, okay, great. Go for it. First listing, you know, exactly. and they're performing on the metrics, then great. Then they've move over and now they're a listing agent uh, or, or they're a, a part of that team. So but to your yeah. point, they don't have to start on the buy side. Literally, yeah. if you've got a buyer division pumping, you got two or three agents that are doing really well on buy sides and they love it. Keep them there. That's and because more than likely they're an IS yeah. in their disc profile. Yeah. Okay. Keep and there. then you go, wow, I am, I'm listing, I'm going on like four listing appointments a week. This is crazy. I need somebody to be my listing assistant. Now I'm going to go look for a listing agent, an agent licensed to come be my protege. Let me put and you on the spot because we're getting some comments about this, Yvonne, is you brought up personality types a few times tonight is what yeah. the comment is on my board. And they said, what is the ideal personality type for a buyer's agent? First, I will tell you there isn't really a true ideal because it has to do with not just that disc profile piece. That's a part of it. It has to do with who, what their background is, who they are, you know, what their emotional stability is. So when we look at just the DISC though, and I'm going to clarify, we are just looking at the DISC. In my world and what I've studied is that an IS, not too high I because they squirrel too much, but somewhere between 50 and 75, 80, and an S somewhere in that range, with a D that's somewhere around 25, 30, maybe in there, under 50 though. The, the C we don't care about so much because that's gonna be gone on those people anyway. Um, and that is a buyer's agent in a disc profile. Give when us the list since we're, at, since we're here. Mm -hmm. Give us the list side since we're here. Yeah, I was going there, that's good. So <laughs> list, side, list side is gonna be probably a higher D, less I. 
a, a if if you guys know yourselves and if you guys like listings and you you go oh, this buyer wants to go out with me right now your disc has changed since you were a buyer's agent and i guarantee you it has because because you don't have that uh, bedside manner as much anymore <laughs> so a listing agent has a much higher d what a polite way to say it jason's, better, jason's, right? a, jason's an sc though okay but that, I'm, and kidding. That, and I'm I, kidding. I'm kidding. He's, he's not. not no, he's not. No, not at all. You might be. <laughs> right. The amiable one is not. No, you're okay. not. So ideal. I mean, I know I'm not ideal, but a, typical. A DI, listing. a DI with the listing agent. Okay. No. Uh, admin assistant. SCCS. But you need that I to be a little bit around the 40-ish range because you want them to be nice. If they're too people. low. Yeah. And the D can be anywhere. You want somebody that's going to be more of an operator, their D is going to be a little higher. And if you want somebody that's going to be more compliant, their D is going to be lower. However, an SC can be, or a CS can be a hidden driver as well, depending on how good they are. How important are these when you're hiring a virtual assistant? Because we talked about that earlier, but we didn't go deep on it. So real quick, because we have a good audience right now. I think it's important. Yeah. That's a great question. That's a great question. You know what? I don't think I've ever looked into that, but I do think it's important. So we're, we're interviewing, we're interviewing about four or five VAs next week for a project we're working on. And I'm so grateful Summit VA shares the disc profiles, the full comprehensive disc profiles in advance. And I know who I am. I know who my dad is. And we don't need anybody else like us. <laughs> if we have more than one driver on the team, it's going to go cuckoo. Yeah. But we need, we're, we're missing a high C. We're missing yeah. a high C desperately. Yeah. So, so that's great. I mean, I, I think it would be the same on a virtual as it would be in a live in-person in-house person. Um, and then I'd want for them, if they've done, they got a track record. I want the resume. I want it. I want, a, yeah, I want yeah. references. I want to grill whoever they've worked for Yep. because they have an independent contractor business and they are saying they're great at what they do already. You know what we need for this show, Jay? What's that? We need Bree Martin to be able to come alongside and take the notes of all these amazing speakers. Oh, and can I come all back? Because I've always wanted to have her art, with my oh, words in her art. Right? Why have we not thought of that? I've got a whole wall of Bree Martin original I know, from your speech. Yes, from my from my stage and from the five a.m. calls uh, with yes. Sharon. Um, yeah. we, need oh, a, we need a VA that does Bree Martin. <laughs> You, you can just what? send her the recordings or say, hey, could you go look at these recordings and do a few little artistic additions? She's, she's fantastic. And she's in uh, Wyoming. Casper, Wyoming. Beautiful place. Oh, my yeah. God. She's yeah. in Wyoming, I believe. So if you're looking to buy or sell on that neck of the woods, give Brie Martin a shout. So uh, she's volunteers her time to a lot she of She actually people. has a Facebook page and just her notes or art by Brie or something like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Every every yeah. event she's been to is notes are on there. Yvonne, yeah. we've kept you way beyond Idaho time. So no it's, it's mountain time there, seven fifteen? No, you don't know. You don't realize I'm sitting here in my perch, I call it. It's the upstairs of a nineteen oh seven house. And uh, as Mike Shum would say, it's like I'm the big woman in the little house. And um, and I'm my husband went, uh, we literally walk to the bar and he went over to meet his friend for a beer. So I'm just going to go join him. That's Good. life I know. I love <laughs> that. I know we don't have to say this, but super appreciate you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity, your wisdom. Um, absolute amazing content as usual. Totally in your wheelhouse. Like we didn't even go there yet. There's so no. much more that we could have gone to. I could do this forever. I, as you can tell, I'm a little bit geeked out about it. But well, I, I, I would need another cider, but you guys would pick on me more. <laughs> I would be like the 24 hours of real estate or something. And you just oh. go and you bring another guest and another guest and people could chime in. Like, I'm going to go there at 3 to 4 oh. a.m. Oh, I have an idea. And we could sell like um, we could like um, get donations, and we could donate it to a charity, kind of like the the twenty four hour walk around yeah. the track. We could do it on real estate on a Zoom for twenty four hours. <laughs> That'd be so good. The audience would not be there, guys. Okay, I yeah, gotta go. Would you don't know, Andy? We put you at the four a.m. slot. You'd sell out for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate you.
<laughs> Thank you, you Yvonne. Enjoy your Thank beer. You. Enjoy your wine at the pub. I will. Bye. Thank you again. Bye.